Doctrine of Liberty, let's everybody stand and everybody say, God bless Sister Yuzapan. Hallelujah, everyone. Brother Nate, is there any way we can tone these lights down a little bit? I can't even see my paper. Thank you. You may be seated. When Pastor asked me um, to teach tonight, I had already had something laid on my heart, didn't know when I was going to teach it, but he asked me to teach, so I started preparing it, and then this morning I got up, and in the wee hours of this morning, God started talking to me about some things, and I took Ezra to school this morning, and on my way back to the house, or on my way to the church, God started speaking to me about some other things, so I want to share some stuff with us tonight probably won't get any more excited than what you see me right now than I could fool us all, both. But um, I want to do some preaching tonight. In one of my business meetings this past week, I read a comment about a book that a lady was reading, and it went like this. Everything in life is like taking a swing at a pinata. Your business relationships, your job, your walk with God, everything. You have to develop the mindset of one more try. When kids play the pinata game, they know that it's going to be tough to break that pinata. But they just keep swinging. You keep at it because you know something good is going to come out of it. You keep swinging. You get frustrated because you hit it and you hit it and you hit it and nothing happens. You think it's never going to break, but you just keep hitting it and hitting it. What you do not see is the invisible progress that is being made. Brokenness is all about growth and making you stronger. Every blow makes the shell of the pinata weaker and closer to breaking. Someone steps up one more time. They take the stick and whack. The pinata cracks, and boom, the beauty of the candy, the toys, and the coins as they fall to the ground, and the kiddos go nuts. Many of us have felt like a pinata. What now, God? How much more do you think I can take? Why is this happening? Where are the promises that you promised? Something else comes along and takes another whack. That hurts, God. I'm so tired. Stop. I can't take it anymore. Whack. You feel like one more blow and you're going to totally lose it. I've talked to several friends this week and I've listened to their hurt and their frustrations. One told me, I am so mad at God. One said, for letting this thing happen. Another said, I don't understand. And another said, I just wouldn't listen when I was given the advice. All different scenarios, but the same confusion and the same pain because life had given them another whack. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you tonight, I don't know why things seem to fall apart. I don't know why our children backslide. I don't know why our loved ones die. We're hurt by our most trusted friends. Illness comes and our bodies are weak. Money is non-existent and we're wondering where the next paycheck is going to come from or how the next bill is going to get paid. I don't know why, but I know this, that heaven holds all the answers that some will never know until we get there. This is why we walk by faith and not by sight. Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us, for I know the plans, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope 
in your final outcome. Not hope in what's going on right now. Not hope in the things that's going on around us. But hope in our final outcome. Blessed is he that endureth until the end. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's not time to give up. It's not time to quit. It's time to pick up that pinata stick and give it another swing. Right. He knows, and we know deep down inside, that we are becoming beautifully broken so that we can be repair, repaired after his plan and his will. I was thinking about this this morning as I felt God gently tugging at my heart. Many times we blame everything on the devil. But you need to understand that the devil can't touch you, ladies and gentlemen, without God's permission. Right. Now, temptations come. And whether you yield to them or not has nothing to do with the devil. That's you. Because you made a conscious decision. But he cannot hurt you. He cannot touch you. He cannot do one thing to you without God's permission. Well, prove it to me, Sister Yuzapan. Be glad to. Job's a good example. The devil had to have God's permission before he could touch Job. And in the end, the devil did, with God's permission, take everything that Job owned but his life. And through it all, Job came out the victory because he said, even though he slays me, still will I serve him. We can't give up. We can't stop. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You need to stop giving the devil credit. Brother Smith said it when he was here. I listened to my conference call this afternoon, and the lady that was teaching my conference call made the same statement. Words have power. What are we speaking into our church? What are we speaking into our community? What are we speaking into our families? What are we speaking into our lives? Are you saying we're never going to have revival? Are we saying our children can't be saved? Are we saying I cannot be healed? Or are we saying, thank God for my children coming home. Thank God for the revival in our community. Thank God for my healing and my miracles. Stop giving the devil credit. Because when we do this, we're saying that he has more influence in our life than God does. Right. And we need to put a stop to it. Because words have power. Start changing your perspective and look at it differently. Sister Jesus Pan, I would never say this. Well, think about it. Just a day, a day of happening. You get a flat tire on the way to work. Or you come out your house door like I did the other day and your tire's almost flat. And the first thing with, oh, the devil's on my back again. When if you stop and change your perspective a minute, there might have been a wreck going on down the road because God's fixing to call somebody home and he's trying to protect you from being caught in the middle of it. So thank God for that flat tire. God many times needs to get through our outer shells that we've built around ourselves in order to get into the beauty that he created inside of us to come out to show this lost and dying world. Psalms 51 and 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. That means in the good times and in the bad times we acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. God is trying to create in us the vessels he wants us to be. Sometimes he needs to break us up. He needs to whack us with that pinata stick to get through our pride, to get through our willfulness, our laziness, and our humanistic ways. But if we will just let him do the work, then he will. Right. Psalms 34 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite. The word contrite there means crushed spirit. You ever felt crushed? Psalms 147 and 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. God is the heart mender. 
He is the family mender. He is the family salvation. He is the financial advisor. He is the healer. He is your beginning and he will be there at your ending. But we have got to give it to him. The Japanese have an art form called kintsugi. And kintsugi is the art of putting together broken pottery. They don't throw anything away. They break a china cup, then they put it back together. And they put it together with this process called kintsugi. Kintsugi is a metaphor for embracing your flaws and imperfections. Kuma made this statement in his book, Kintsugi. You won't realize your full potential until you go through tough times. Kintsugi means to join with gold or the golden repair. Gold in itself is not pure. When the Japanese take that broken piece of pottery, they'll pick it up and they don't mend it back together with glue. They don't mend it back together with cement or all those textures. They take gold and they mend that pottery back together. And you'll have turquoise pottery with lines of gold run through it where they've mended the kintsugi back together. A refiner will take gold and he will heat the metal to high, a high, high temperature, roughly around 2 thousand degrees. The heat makes all the different metals melt and separate and what's left behind is pure gold. The gold has to go through that extreme heat process to come out better than it was before and sometimes God's got to put us through the heat to do the same thing in our lives. As God changes our perspectives we will begin to see less of what is wrong and more evidence of God's refining work in our lives. God is bringing weaknesses to the surface so that we can ultimately be stronger, more like him, more reflected of him. He's cracking our pinatas. James 1, 2 through 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And then Ephesians 2.21 says, In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. We were made to be fit together. We were made to be put together to do a work for the kingdom of God. And God is trying to prepare his temples for his glory. We have to be fitly framed together. Not like the children of Israel always murmuring and complaining. Always grumbling and finding fault. My kids talked about this Sunday in children's church. Always fussing about they wanted something to eat, God gave them manna. They didn't want the manna anymore, so God gave them quail. They wanted water, so God gave them water and it didn't taste right, so God gave them other water. They didn't like where they were living. They didn't like the city they had to conquer. They just didn't like themselves. And sometimes we find fault in everything around us and ourselves. And God is saying, let me refine you. Let me bring out the impurities. And let me make you the vessel that I want you to be so that we can be fitly framed together. Zechariah 13 and 9 says, And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. And they will call on my name and I will hear them. There's a promise there, ladies and gentlemen, when you're going through the fire, when he's bringing the impurities out on you. Call on his name. Call on his name, and he is there. I will say, these are my people, and they will say, he is my God. We need to call on the God. We need to quit trying to do everything ourselves and trying to work everything out ourselves because we weren't created to work everything out ourselves. We were created to let the creator take care of the situations. We need to learn to let go and let God. We step back and we say, well, I can't. I don't know how. I need to do this. If I don't, then who will? I'm guilty about saying that one. Then if you don't trust God, all he's trying to do is get to you. He is trying to get you to see that your piñata shell has got to be broken so he can let all that good stuff come out. And he will repair you with his gold and you will find that you're 
beautifully broken. Now, when I started tonight, I told you about the story of the pinata. And we talked about it getting smacked. But as the shell starts cracking and we let go and let God have his way in every aspect of our lives, then we're refined through the fire, repaired with pure gold of the Spirit, and now God can use us for his glory and his service. Now, you're going to hear and you're going to give because we're human, all kind of excuses. You're going to hear those say, well, you don't know what I've done. And then you'll hear God say, even a million scars don't change who you are. But I have regrets and life is full of darkness. I am the light, the way maker, the truth. You can be whole again. I have lost my way. He will light your path and he will be a lamp unto your feet. I'm not worthy. I hear this more and more every day in the church and out of the church. I'm not worthy. I've got stuff in my life. I've had stuff in my life. Let me ask you something, ladies and gentlemen. He is the God who made the stars. He is the God who made your heart. He's holding you in his hand right now. He can heal all the broken parts and make beauty from scars when you're beautifully broken. Don't stop. Don't back down. Don't give up. God is molding you. And it hurts. I know. I've been there. But anything worth having in life is worth fighting for. And a relationship with the master is worth it all. Every tear and every doubt, every time you've fallen down, when you're hurting and when you're feeling ashamed, when you're num numbering off your pains, when you're lost your way, when you feel so far away, you're not far away, you're just beautifully broken. Even a million scars don't change who you are. You're worthy. Every fear of being loved for who you are, no matter what, when you're stumbling, when you're haunted by regrets, when the darkness comes, just listen for his voice because you're beautifully broken. He's the God who made the stars and he's the God who made your heart. He's holding you right now and he can heal those broken parts and make beauty from scars because you've been beautifully broken. God knows who you are and the scars don't matter to God. For you're beautifully broken. When God gave this to me today, I sat there and I cried for a while. Because you see, I understand what it's like to be broken. And I understand what it's like to feel like a failure. And I understand what it's like to wonder where the money's going to come from. And why things are the way they are sometimes. But God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know what I'm doing, Sister Kit Clatter. So if we will learn just to step back and realize that broken doesn't have to be ugly because when God mends us back together, those scars are part of a beautifully broken pattern that God can use you for to reach out to somebody else. We need to learn to worship God and the beautifully broken wax from the pinata stick because God is saying, I'm shaping you. I'm molding you. I'm going to make a way. God loves you. You are special. Don't ever think that you're unworthy because God loves you. He knew you when you were still in your mother's womb, and he will take care of you today, honey. And he knows just what he's got planned for you. He knows what he's got planned for me. And I'm going to take it a step further, ladies and gentlemen. He knows what's planned for this church right here in Rocky Mount. We just need to reach out and claim the beautifully broken aspects that God is working into our lives.